Let him get away. Over there!
I'll get your boss. Yes, sir. Jack Powers here. I'll see Mr. Barrow. All right? I was sure he'd get here sooner or later. I've been waiting for this moment for some time, gents. Yeah. He's gonna be sorry. How you doing, Jack? I looked all over for you, never found you, so I stopped. Because you were looking everywhere except the place where I was. The little place where you had me locked up for three solid years. Ah, uh, let's not talk I about think we it. should talk about it. If you want, sure. Let's talk it over at my house. It's more private, like. All right. Just remember that you owe me $10,000, Mr. Lent. And since three solid years have gone by, I suppose we should add the normal interest rate. So let's make it say, um, how about 20? Well, um, I suppose, come on. It's you. You haven't washed for a week. I brought you some water. Tell me something. What the hell kind of books are these? They're law books. What good are they? They teach a man about his rights. That's so. Well, I don't need to read anything to find out all my so-called rights. I know what they are. It's just to do what I want. I'm sorry, Jack. You're very wrong. I don't think so. And if these books say something different, then they're the ones that are wrong. Just remember that. 
These books weren't written for men like us. Our law... Our law is made of bullets. Is this yours, Chris? It's rusty. You have to take care of a gun. Or you would a girl. You haven't used it in a while, huh? Not for five years. <laughs> You're like a man who's given up smoking. Just keeping one around. Jack, why did they want to get rid of you? Just did. You know, Buck and I see the law with the same eyes. So there's one too many of us. I offer you a little drop, Chris? You gotta quit that, Joe. <laughs> when I drink, I forget all about my troubles, you know. When you drink, you just add to your troubles, friend. Oh, uh, come on now, Chris. What the hell are you talking about? Joe, if you don't stop drinking like that, you wind up dead one day. I'm warning you. Hand it over. At least try not to let everyone see you. I don't care about who sees. People can be mean, Joe. As if he wasn't part of the human race. Uh. Well, did I startle you, Mr. Landon? <laughs> you thought I was dead and buried, didn't you? I'll teach you a lesson. Next time you should do things a little more carefully. If you live enough to see you next time, that is. Ah! Ah! Fellow citizens of Red Rock, we are gathered together, united by the sorrow we all share, at a time doubly cruel for its unexpected, to give last respects to our friend, Buck Landon. Buck, who was undoubtedly the finest citizen among us, a man to whom we could always point with admiration, for Buck was a God-fearing man, a gentle soul whose vital spark was snuffed out by the foul hand of an assassin who is surely doomed to hellfire everlasting. All his life, citizens, he spent industriously working for the good and welfare of the poor of our county and state. His soul, then, we recommend to God on high. Let us take it upon ourselves as a sacred trust from God in the heavens to follow the splendid example of this fine man's life. How dare she come? 
I ask every man and woman here to join me now in prayer. Let us pray that the soul of our dearly beloved Buck may rest in peace amidst the splendors of heaven. Get out of here. What are you doing? Let go of me. Let me go. The lady's with me. I don't agree. We can't afford to make any mistakes from now on. I'm sure Jack knows the whole story. What do you have in mind, Garrett? Jack Barrow's a hard man to deal with. With money, I think anybody's easy to deal with. Let's not forget that. Buck died because of that $10,000. Mr. Garrett, the respectable mayor of the respectable town. And Harry Fillmore, the respectable president of the Red Rock Railway. And Middleton, president of the county bank. You look respectable today, too. And now that we've all been introduced, here are my conditions. Don't bother. Up until this very day, you've just been petty thieves. Sorry, but it won't do. There's a lot of money in this county. One hell of a lot. I figure we can get it into our hands. As of now, I'm taking control of all the activities in town and 30% of the income. Not enough, huh? All right, then 50. Of all of it. So, we're going to have to lay a smoke screen between the county and us. Someone above all suspicion, but enough of an idiot that he won't interfere with us. Yeah, where do you suppose we can find someone like that? Won't be easy. You can leave that to me. Dorothy, have you seen Chris? He's gone there, to the horses. Have you seen Chris? Going up that way.
Morning, Chris. I think your ideas are going to have results. I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't want to know. <laughs> Watch out! Well, I think you might find it interesting all the same, boy. <laughs> you better run faster than that. What's it all about? Well, I asked you, what's it all about? The town council has named you sheriff. But the people of this town have never needed a sheriff. This place is calm, you know, peaceful. Don't even drink a lot. Perfect for you. What could be better? The only sheriff who doesn't have to worry about getting killed on the job. No job for me. I don't believe you. You better. Back scrub. Who is it? Didn't your mother teach you to knock? Get out of here. If you didn't notice, I'm in the tub. Very true. If you don't stop moving, I'll kick you out of here in a second. To do that, you'd have to stand, so please go ahead. All right. What do you want? Will you let go of me? You have the manners of a pig. And you don't even have enough money to afford me. Get out. I want to get dressed, mister, and right now. It's a sacrifice. But I'll turn the other way. You're used to being listened to, aren't you? Well, so am I. So this time you can listen to me. The most I can do for you is to thank you kindly for what you did today. I'm not about to go any further than that for so little. Even though you obviously seem to think that what you did today was some kind of act of heroism. After all, there were just a bunch of old women at that cemetery today, and the mayor. <laughs> it didn't take much to stare them down, did it? But thanks a lot anyway. So what? Now you've heard what I had to say. Anything else you wanted? I want to make a deal. Understand? No, mister, I don't. What are you talking about? If it's the kind of deal I imagine it to be, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> no, mister, that kind of deal you can keep. I've just had too many. With all the most respectable gentlemen in Red Rock. Well, that's what I wanted to talk over with you. You're wasting your talents for nothing. You're not going to need those gentlemen anymore. If you came here to preach a little, you might just as well forget it. I know what I am and what I do, but it's the only way I can live. The only important thing is to manage to go on living somehow. And those clients are powerful. If you accept my proposition, you can be the mistress of the most powerful one of them all. It makes for a better life, Clementine. Better life, huh? Yes, yeah, sure. For as long as that most powerful one happens to stay like that. 
Well, that's me from now on. Listen. I've had them prepare an apartment, a style befitting you. I've also canceled your deals with the other gentlemen. As of now, you're my property. Private and branded and all mine. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. I'm sort of running things at the saloon now. As a matter of fact, you could say I'm the boss. size, I'd guess you were Bill Hackett. But uh, I'm afraid your cigar doesn't scare me. I'm not trying to scare you, Mr. Barrow. Just fumigating this musty old place, I might. What brings you here? Well, as of today, you need five men. They cost $2,000, I cost four. Why? Because I'll settle for double. And I'm worth triple. Explain. Hmm. I'm in a good mood today. And I'm easy going, but don't push too hard. Wasn't I said I wasn't interested? Wouldn't be very clever of you. And you lose a lot of money, see? Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't care for the stink of that kind of cigar, Mr. Hackett. And I don't care for people to waste time. Whenever you want to start, I'm ready, Barrow. Me too. As of March, the Eastern Railways will no longer be able to ship cattle, signed the town council. You hear that? That's the way these gentlemen are going to starve us out. In seven months or so, these beasts are going to be too old for us to make a cent. We'd better think up something. I know what I'll do. What we're all going to do, we'll be forced to sell every bull and calf to Middleton at half price. That's all right for you. But I don't go along with that game. Our herds are going to Missouri. I don't care if we lose 50 cents a head. I'm going another way. Me and my boys, we'll ford the Green River, just the way my pappy did 50 years ago. That could be plenty dangerous, Walter. I don't give a damn. I'd rather be dead than put up with this. You're right. You're right. All right, who's next? Here. I'll pay, but... But I... I want to know what this money's going for. They pay for guard protection around your farm, Paul. But I... I never seen a single one of your men within 20 miles of my place. You stupid moron! The guards are hidden so that they won't be seen. You understand? <coughs> this time you get off with a little dust in the seat of your pants. The next time you get some lead there. All right, next. Uh, here you are, mister. All I got is $20. I'll bring you the rest next Saturday, I promise. You said next Saturday, Thompson. Remember it, unless you want some lead for yourself. Fine, you can go. What a pleasant surprise. I must say that I didn't expect it. You wouldn't imagine that a man who has the reputation of a saint would come down into hell. So you call this hell, do you, Clementine? It's more comfortable than I always thought. Jack of hearts. Queen of spades. Three of hearts. What kind of game is that? Old Indian ladies do this to predict the future. And the cards tell the truth every time. And what do the cards say now? Well, this is Jack. And I'm this one. <laughs> it's obviously you. It's right next to Jack. The Indians are absolutely right. The cards don't seem to lie. The cards also say that Jack and I will be very rich. Hmm. And what's this one? Well, believe it or not, it's you, Sheriff. And you're next to Jack, too. I think there's a card between you two. No, Clem. This time the cards are dead wrong. There's no card between me and Jack. Just the law. All right, Chris. Better go on and tell me right out loud why you came to see me. There's no need to. 
You know perfectly well I came to talk to Jack. Well, you can wait for him alone. Just a minute. Think it over, Clem. If you want to get out of hell, you go through the same door you used to get in. They told me that the sheriff was here. I could just barely believe it. <laughs> Sit down. Walter and Joe White were killed the other day. I know. Everyone's talking about it in town. However, you must admit they asked for it. You see, they were wrong to go so far out of town. It was too big a temptation for the Indians. They should have signed on my protection deal. I warned them it would happen sooner or later. Hmm. So their account is closed. No, Barrow. I'm afraid it's still wide open. Not for us, Chris. Oh, sorry. It's the army that takes care of the Indians. That's perfectly true. The army has to take care of the Indians, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's the sheriff of Red Rock who'll be taking care of whoever killed the White Brothers. <coughs> Hey, get your tail over here. About as slow as molasses in January. <laughs> hey, hey, stop pouring that stuff. Yeah, when a man goes in with some money, he ought to buy some drinks for his friends. Here, take that. And I don't want to see any change. Sheriff, let's have a little drink together, huh? <laughs> the sheriff is my guest. I'm not a drinker. You must know that. Oh, that's a real pity. I was about to get out the oldest keg in the house. You don't know it, Chris. So pretty soon you'll have to drink. I think it's gonna be long. I think we can manage an exception for the sheriff. Well, that knife doesn't belong to you. It's mine. I was wondering. If it's yours, you have a right to it. Yeah. You're coming with me. Hey. Hey. Uh, Sheriff, are you arresting that man? Right. I want to question him about the White Brothers. Of course. <laughs> it's your right. Sheriff shouldn't be walking around town unarmed, should he? I saved your life, Chris. Now we're even.
Joe. Better get back home, Joe. I'm sorry, but if I find you drunk once more, I'll have to lock you up in jail. And believe me, I don't want to have to do that. Come on. I'd like a beer. Mighty pretty medal you're wearing there. <sighs> Must have got it for good conduct. No, Hackett. Look it over again. It's the star of the Sheriff of Red Rock. Was she your baby? Yes, she was. And did you love her? Every mother in the world loves her baby. Like your mother loves you. I don't got a mama. Who looks after you? Oh, I guess everybody a little bit. And you? Everybody. Just like you. Who is it? It's me, Clementine. Won't you, uh, won't you sit down, please? I'm sure you've come about Jack, haven't you? He's no good. Go away from here. You must, Clem, at least until things are back to normal. And everything will be normal again. Chris, please, just what you have against Jack. You should know. 
Jack Barrow took the ugliness out of my life. For the first time since I was a child, I can go out of doors in the daytime without being ashamed. I'm free, respected. I know that Jack isn't the best of men. But he is a man, and for a woman like me, that means security, protection, affection. That type of man never helps anyone. If you're speaking for me, please don't worry. I'll do all right on my own. Our town is, or was, one of the few peaceful ones in the West. A place where you could still find justice. What kind of justice, Chris? What kind? What has your wonderful justice done for me all these years? Anyone who wants to live decently in this world has no choice but to tag along with the strongest one. And at the moment, the strongest is Jack. There's something even stronger, Clem. The law of the land. Only it must have someone who can make folks respect it. And I decided that I could become that man, Clem. I guess you better tell Jack. <laughs> you can't catch me. <laughs> Where did you run to, Dorothy? I went to get my doll, Patricia. Uncle Chris is the one who gave it to me. Here. Thank you, dear. Pretty. It was made just for this evening. I want to be the prettiest girl there. I think maybe we better open the door. If you really want to, go ahead. It doesn't seem right, though, does it? After all, nice girls don't get undressed with the door open. I've been told I'm pretty, so I enjoy getting out of my clothes. What's the matter, Sydney? Haven't you ever seen a woman strip down to her intimate garments? <laughs> Are you trying to say you've never been down the street to see Clem? Sydney, tell me. I want you to. Mama. <laughs> you know what you are. You're just an old coward. I was looking for you. What were you up to, Sydney, dear? Uh, just getting ready, Mother. Do you have any idea who delivered this invitation to go to Jack Barrow's? Hmm? Uh, no, uh, I don't know, Mama. You, you could ask Papa. No, I don't really need to know. They're going to be sorry for that. 
Who do they think they are? I could squash them all if I wanted to. Don't make such a big thing. After all, it's only a party. Forget it. What about that plan you had for the Mexican district? You don't understand. It's not just a party. It's a challenge. They think they can show me that they still run things around here. But they're mistaken. Yes, sir. I've made up a little surprise for them all. You absolutely have to wear that bracelet I gave you. You shouldn't have. Now my wife knows. Nothing more. 
No, you, you can't pretend like that. I can see what's in your eyes. You're gonna drive us both crazy. No, stop it, I said. I'm going now. We've been gone too long. Just another few minutes. It's just what you did to me up in my room. So you came out here just to get even with me. We can go now, my dear. doesn't want to, there's nothing a man can do about it. I didn't want to do her any harm. We went to the grain store, alongside the church. And then she... She slipped on the straw and fell on her head. It wasn't my fault, I swear. Did anyone see you? I don't know. I don't think so. Daryl, what can we do? It's a scandal for my son and for me. I think I can arrange things, if I want to. Don't joke, Barrow. I'm not joking at all. I can manage it, but for a price. Whatever you want, I don't care. I don't care. Oh, about a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand dollars. Mr. Barrow, you must be joking. Well? All right, Barrow. What are you going to do? Well, just make sure you follow my instructions. Come on, Bill. You have to be very strong now, my dear. One of these men may be the one who attacked you.
Yes. No, Miss Sally. Sheriff, it isn't true. I wasn't anywhere near the feed store last night. I swear it. Now listen to me, all of you. Joe's going to be tried. That trial was over a minute ago. You wouldn't put the word of a young woman against a stupid old drunk, eh? Even a stupid drunk can be innocent. Who says so? One of your damned books? There isn't anyone who knows what he's doing when he's soused. Well, that's what I'm here for, to find out the truth. Make sure the law is respected. Robinson, put him in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you must admit it was beautifully carried out, Mr. Barrow. So I think I deserve a lot more than we agreed on. Let's face it, you own a town now, you can do what you want. After all, old Joe wasn't part of our deal. There was just the White Brothers and Tom Ford. Getting an innocent man hanged is a terrible thing. And my conscience bothers me something awful. Well, try this. Might help soothe your conscience. What do you say? No, sir. Not quite good enough, Barrow. No. What else do you want? Speak up. I'm not too good at talking. So I wrote it all down. <laughs> Today I'll have a drink.
Why should a man believe in anything? If a damn filthy bandit like Barrow can murder and not be punished. A murderer, Jack Barrow. A murderer and a coward. Because you don't even have the guts to do your own killing. Pig, you coward. Get out of here. If you're still in this town tomorrow, I'll kill you. to what I owe you, and a thousand dollars more than we agreed. As good a way as any to tell you that I'm satisfied. So your work for me is finished. I'm beginning to like this town. I might not go after all. I'll just take 20% of everything. And I'll make a good sheriff, too. Clever idea, huh? It's really too bad. Cost you 50,000, mister. All right. I'll give it to you. And you'll give it to me now. How do you expect me to get it? I don't give a damn how. All right. We make a deal. The money after you've killed Chris. I'll do it. But after I do, I become the sheriff of Red Rock. Remember. Chris, I... No. Don't say anything. You don't have to. You didn't forget that a few days ago I told you to leave this hell. And I'm glad. I want you to leave, too. Clem, I can't. 
Do you know what would happen? Nobody would ever again believe that the law was something worth cherishing. And there's no doubt that it's my duty to show everyone that it is. But Jack is going to kill you. That's not important. The important thing is to let the others know. Come out here! Come outside! Sorry, Barrow's gone out of town for an hour. Can I do anything for you? You're talking to the sheriff.
Jack. 